Now that's what I'm talking about. That song is very fitting for the first item on the Phil Smith Top 10 Favorite Things About 2011 Vlog. I am very happy to say that I'm going to be adding music throughout this vlog, so that's why I'm speaking a little bit loud here, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope it enhances the vlog a little bit, because I hope you're ready. I've been working all year on this, so here we go. Once again, utilizing my computer here, Phil Smith's Top 10 Favorite Things About 2011, starting at number 10, fitting right in with the music. Back to the Future, the video game. Yes, after the 25th anniversary of Back to the Future, back in 2010, they were making a brand new video game all themed around Back to the Future. It was actually a five-part episodic video game series available through PlayStation, Xbox, and the Wii. And I'm very happy to say that I have all five games rather episodes fully played fully completed it's one of the best games I've played ever I did have a little bit of bad news in getting this game and that was if you recall earlier this year right around I believe it was May or June the PlayStation Network went completely kaput you might say I don't know what happened but somehow the whole network got hacked into which meant that no new video games for that matter not even any PlayStation rock band songs or whatever you get off the PlayStation Network could be downloaded to your systems. And that was just, it was awful. I mean, here we were with about two episodes of the Back to the Future game, and someone hacked into the network and we just couldn't get them. But now, we do have all five episodes. I've played them, I love them, so does my best friend Paul CB. And I gotta say, the ending, as Bob Gale himself said when doing interviews for the game, it was exactly what the fans are looking for. And I gotta say, I couldn't agree more. If you don't mind spoilers, then I'm going to say, click that little link down there that I have provided for you and check it out. That little link is exactly what you need to click on to see just how the video game of Back to the Future ends. And I do hope you, as I did, enjoy it as an absolute fan of the series Back to the Future. That was my number 10 favorite thing about 2011, Back to the Future, the video game. Moving on now to number nine, we have The Office. Now, for a long time, I never thought I would be interested in The Office. I tried to watch the original British version and I just hated it. But then I watched the American version and I kind of didn't like that one either. But then subsequently, through a little push from my buddy and former co-worker Jeff, I decided to check out the second season after already watching the first season, which was only about six episodes. So, I have to admit, after that second season, I was enjoying it a lot more. And I still enjoy it. It's a great show, great characters, and quotable too. I even have, to start off the year, an office calendar. Starts out here actually for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. A quote from Michael saying, Holly gave AJ an ultimatum. He either proposes by New Year's or they break up. Now, if she's engaged, I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to start attacking people. If she's not engaged, in all honesty, I may just burn this whole place to the ground out of happiness. Either way, I am going to need some talking down and nobody talks me down like myself in a video talking me down. Great show, The Office. American version with Steve Carell, of course, he left the show after this past season, but I think it's still going great. I love it, and I watch it religiously Thursday nights. I don't have cable, but I watch it online, so no commercials. That's a plus. And this is a good segue into number eight, actually. Number eight was the off, I'm sorry, number nine was the office. Segwaying now to number eight, a song I'm gonna play here by number eight, they Might Be Giants, called Can't Keep Johnny Down off their album, my favorite album of 2011, Join Us. 
And if you ask me, this song sounds very similar to the instrumental theme to The Office. Listen. That little, you know, da 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 reminds me of that uh, first set of notes. And the lyrics seem to just speak The Office. You know, this little guy Johnny, doesn't matter what hell he's going through, what big titans or giants are going to stand in the way of his having a good time, he's going to take them all. You can't keep Johnny down. And you can't keep down my love of They Might Be Giants. I've even started getting in a mass of albums here. Flood, which had the classic hits Istanbul, not Constantinople, and Birdhouse in Your Soul. Apollo 18, featuring the hit single I, Palindrome I. Factory Showroom, another great one that, um, trying to think of which ones are some of the hit singles here. I guess, um, XTC versus Adam Ant. How Can I Sing Like a Girl? And New York City, that was a great one, New York City. Plus, one of my favorites from yesteryear, Severe Tire Damage, a collection of live performances they might be giants have done through the years. I just absolutely love these guys. And you know, to think, they are really what's classified as college radio. They really made it big through being played through college. And I think it was actually WXPN in Philadelphia that played them first. And that's how they really rose to fame. So I really hope that one of these days they come to Vegas. I know they've been here before. So I hope to see them sometime live in the future. Number eight on my favorite things about 2011, they might be giants. Moving on now, we get to number seven. Number seven deals with a TV show that a lot of us have watched before and loved. I know you know this show. It started with the all too familiar strains of Joe Cocker covering the Beatles with a little help from my friends. That show, of course, is The Wonder Years. And for years, no pun intended, that show has been highly demanded for being put on DVD. If you know anything about TV going to DVD, most of the time why it takes so long is because of music rights issues. That's pretty much why The Wonder Years has been taking so long. However, this year, they did one better for us fans of the Wonder Years. Netflix decided to, in their infinite wisdom, God bless them, they put all the seasons of the Wonder Years on Netflix Instant. So if you're a Netflix member with Instant available, you can watch every episode of the Wonder Years just like that. I love it. I'm reliving my childhood watching this show with a little help from my friends. Not those kind of friends, you dunce. I mean, just through the good, good people at Netflix deciding to make this available for us fans. The Wonder Years on Netflix. That is my number seven favorite thing about 2011. Moving on now to number six. This is an interesting one. This is actually a phrase that I decided to come up with earlier this year. And my best friend Paul Seavey knows this more than anyone, I'm sure. It is taking a quote from two of our favorite shows. From The Big Bang Theory, Bazinga, and from Family Guy, Giggity. Put them together and you get Bazingity, a little phrase that I decided to coin earlier this year, and it has become an expression of ours to use many, many times whenever we see something incredible going on in this town, something we really love, we will both just look at each other and go, Bazingity, patent pending. And of course, the music going with this one, because I don't have the theme, I know I should, but I thought, this is a good song anyway. It's by the Bare Naked Ladies, and of course, if you know anything about the Big Bang Theory, you'll know that they perform the show's theme, The History of Everything. So, this song goes along with my favorite thing about 2011 at number six, Bazingity. Moving down now to number five. This is a person. Number five, we're moving down now. 
Number five, my favorite things about 2011 is a girl I met back in about early, now I'll make it late 2010, through a friend of mine I used to work with, Shane. I met Kristen McCoy, and this girl is a great friend of mine. She really became my new hangout buddy, you might say. Even more so when she joined me to see my favorite movie of 2011, Take Me Home Tonight as you can hear it being performed right now by Eddie Money. Krista McCoy has perked me up through a lot of down times, especially when I was unemployed earlier this summer. She has hung out here at my apartment a lot. I've gone out with her and Shane and a couple other former co-workers over at Television City for happy hours, karaoke, drinks, you name it. We've always had a great time and she even tried to help me get a job where she worked, and I still appreciate the effort there. It didn't happen, but still, thank you for that, Kristen. Congratulations, you made it onto the list. Number five, my great, great gal pal, Krista McCoy. Take me home tonight. You remember, and I still have it. I have it on DVD. Watch it again sometime if you feel like coming over to watch it again. Thank you again for making 2011 an incredible year. Get me out there again, getting social with all the great karaoke people at Shifty's and also the nice place. Number four now, we're moving down into meetup territory with a little bit of the 80s. That's right, the Everything 80s meetup group decided to, in late 2010, make me a DJ for one of their events, and that was our New Year's Eve party. I loved the experience, loved the great exposure. Subsequently, we had this big masquerade ball in February, and who did they ask to DJ it? They also asked two other guys, so there were three of us DJing that night, but out of the three of us, throw those other two out the window. According to sources in our organization staff, I was voted the best DJ out of them all, and why not? I played nothing but 80s, the best of the 80s. I got to subsequently DJ one more party this year that happened right after I got my new job at Adventure Photo Tours, and that was a redneck party we did, sort of backyard trailer trash themed. Once again, I DJed, had a blast, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for more events that they asked me to DJ in 2012, but that is number four, DJing the Everything 80s Meetup Group events. Moving on down to number three, we're going to get a little more sci-fi technical on you here, so prepare to energize. Thought I'd add a little sci-fi music there. That's Prepare to Energize by Torch Song for any of you interested. You may be interested because it kind of ties in with what I'm about to tell you for um, number three on the list of my top ten favorite things about the year. And that is a program called DVD Video Soft. And you can find it, an another link I will post here, dvdvideosoft.com. You click that link and it will take you to a, a website where you can download this. It's actually a suite of programs. Why am I um, talking about this? It's because it comes with two incredible programs. Two programs that allow you to snatch up just about anything you want off of YouTube. And believe me, that's something that a lot of people want to try and get. I found a program that allows you to take anything off of YouTube as a video in high quality and a program that allows you to take anything off of YouTube and convert it to an MP3, which means you don't have to worry about those peer-to-peer -peer file sharing places anymore. The government's cracking down hard on them anyway. Now you can get this free program and grab any music you want off of YouTube in high quality. Keep it forever on your computer or your mobile listening devices. It's so great because there are songs out there they have put out only in Europe that are like extended or remixed versions of 80s songs that I found like clockwork. And I downloaded them 
and I have them saved now, and I love listening to them on my iPod. I have made unofficial soundtracks even, finding the stuff that I found on, on, on YouTube. And this program makes it possible. Once again, check it out if you really are into getting stuff off of YouTube. DVD Video Soft, number three on my top ten favorite things about 2011. Moving on now to number two. We're starting to wrap it up now. Pretty quickly, I might add. Number two now on my top ten favorite things about 2011. Karaoke Triple X. Karaoke with the porn stars. Where else but in Vegas would you expect to see this kind of stuff? And that is the actual website. Now you may recognize this song that I'm playing here. It's actually the theme from Scrubs, the old show that used to be on NBC about the doctors. You know, Zach Braff, Donald Faison, Sarah Chalk. Well, the reason I'm playing this song is that it basically became my signature karaoke song. I love to perform it when I go to karaoke. Everyone loves to hear me sing it. And I just enjoy going there. I mean, it's not so dirty. I'm going to say that right now. I'm always in it just to meet these stars. I like to meet them. I like to talk to them. I like to take pictures with them. I love even singing duets with them. I have done duets with some of these stars, and it's just fun. They do it every Monday night. It used to be every Tuesday night at Brando's Bar down on Blue Diamond and um, Valley View. Now it was being held at um, the Red Label Bar on Sahara near the Strip, but now it's grown even bigger. We now are going to be having karaoke triple X at the Rio Hotel at the King's Room. Now I don't know exactly where this place is. I know where the Rio is, just not the King's Room, but starting a week from Monday, they will be doing karaoke triple X at the King's Room. It's absolutely free, no cover. Come meet the stars, come sing some karaoke, and check out the website to keep constantly updated, karaokeXXX.com. Once again, number two favorite thing about the year, and I want to say thank you, Rebecca Love, for telling me about it. Special thanks to the hostesses who have come to host in the past year, including Claudia Marie, Julia Sands, uh, Tegan Presley, Sammy Spades, and just everyone who attends it each week. Special um, thank you for one of the coolest friends I've made going there, my good buddy Jonathan. Hey man, you have a mean voice there, and you know how to use it, and I'm glad to have become friends with you, buddy. Once again, number two favorite thing about 2011, Karaoke Triple X. And um, look at that! We have made it down to number one now. We are now at number one for my favorite thing about 2011. And you know what that is? You're looking at it. My new apartment. It's the best thing that has happened to me. For years now, I have been unable to live by myself the way I want to live. I have felt so constricted and restrained from so much when I had a roommate. It was just driving me berserk. I needed an escape. And now, I've got it. I mean, you know as well as I do. I customize this place. My bookshelf is on top of a fireplace. I've got the great HD TV complete with PlayStation 3, a new Laserdisc player I bought, multi-regional DVD player, VCR DVD combo, posters that I hang up on the walls to enjoy it and make this place my own. I just love it. I absolutely love my apartment. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, the number one favorite thing of 2011 is my apartment. And you know what? That's just good enough for me. That's all I can say. Yes, three months out of this year were absolute hell for me. And you know what? I still came out of it okay. I got a new job. I got a new apartment. I got a new look on life, you might say. I rebuilt from the ground up again. And you know what? It feels great. 
I will say that with no shame. I feel great. But you all know that I'd be even greater if I can find a new job, hopefully, in the next year. So I really just want to thank you all for sticking by me throughout 2011. You've been a great bunch of friends. Special shout-outs here I'd like to give here. Paul Seavey, Christopher Durr, Krista McCoy, Shane Sather, Jonathan Griffith, Jeff Grandstrom, Tom Reese, my mom and dad, my grandma, I love you and I miss you. Rest in peace up there with grandpa. To everyone who made 2011 incredible, to anyone out there that's going to make 2012 even greater. I look forward to seeing you in 2012. You all have a great New Year's Eve tonight. Be careful, be happy, have fun. This is Phil Smith once again with my top 10 favorite things about 2011 signing off.